Hey, it's Alex from Android Central, and this is the Samsung Galaxy Alpha. This little phone is a big deal for Samsung as it launches a new design language with greater focus on premium materials. And it's also the first time Samsung's targeted flagship specs in a handset smaller than the average 5 inch Android slab. What we've got here is a 4.7 inch phone with an aluminium band around the outside. No more fake chrome plastic, just cold hard metal. And this makes a huge difference to the in hand feel. It just feels like a more premium, more sophisticated device. Despite using a metal frame, the Galaxy Alpha is still ridiculously light, just 115 grams, and it's incredibly slim to measuring 6.7 millimeters, not including the camera bump. So it's really easy to hold in one hand, and more pocket friendly than the average Android flagship too. Larger smartphones do have their uses, but for many the size of the Alpha will feel just right. The plastic hasn't gone away entirely though. Around the back there's a typical plastic battery door which snaps on in the usual way, and has a soft textured finish. The fit does seem significantly better than the Galaxy S5 and earlier phones though, and we haven't noticed any flex or creaking in our device just yet. The basic layout of ports and buttons hasn't changed much either, power on the right, volume on the left, and a big clicky home key flanked by capacitive task switching and back buttons. In the center there's a 4.7 inch 720p Super AMOLED display which looks pretty good, it's bright enough to use outdoors in the sun, and the colors are as vivid as we'd expect from a modern AMOLED screen without making photos look weird and blown out. It is a pentile display though, so if you get close enough you can see jagged edges in some fonts, though this hasn't been a huge issue for us using the phone at a normal viewing distance. On the inside, things get a little interesting. In the US, the Alpha comes with an off-the-shelf Snapdragon 801 CPU, but the European version we've got here uses Samsung's own Exynos 5430 chip, an octa-core CPU with four high-powered Cortex-A15 cores at 1.8GHz, paired with four energy-efficient A7 cores at 1.3GHz. It's not unusual for Samsung to ship both Exynos and Snapdragon versions of a phone, but it has been interesting to use Exynos for a change, and in our experience the chip in here is every bit as fast as its major rival. If the Galaxy Alpha has an Achilles heel then it's battery life, and that's probably not so much to do with the CPU or the display, but the relatively small 1860mAh battery. Most days with this phone we were just about getting into the evening before hitting the warning level after 11-14 to 14 hours use and 3-3.5 to three and a half hours screen on time. On busier days things are getting dicey by late afternoon. So that's probably the biggest reason not to buy this phone, and if you do then it's worth thinking about picking up a second battery to swap in when you need it. The software on here is basically identical to what you'll find on a Galaxy S5, KitKat, in this case the latest Android 4.4.4, and Samsung's TouchWiz UI. Everything you know, love, or grudgingly tolerate about TouchWiz is here, from the selection of S apps like S Voice, the dark teal colour scheme, and the maze of coloured balls that make up Samsung's settings menu. Like many Samsung devices, there's a lot this phone can do, and the feature set falls all over the map in terms of usefulness. S Health keeps track of your exercise, weight, and fitness data using the built in sensors. Airview lets you hover your finger over the screen in certain apps to view previews of stuff, and Download Booster combines LTE and Wi-Fi for faster downloads, and that's to name just a few. A couple of the Galaxy S5's headline features have made it across as well. The Galaxy Alpha isn't water resistant, but it does come with a fingerprint scanner built into the home button, and a heart rate sensor around the back. As before, you can use your fingerprint to unlock the phone, authorize purchases, or authenticate your Samsung account. The Alpha's fingerprint scanner worked a little better for us than the GS5's, though it's not clear whether that's due to the smaller size or any actual changes in the way it works. At the same time, the Alpha's heart rate sensor didn't seem to fail anywhere near as often as the GS5 and GS5 minis, though questions remain over how useful this feature is for those who aren't obsessively keeping track of this stuff in the S Health app. The camera setup is also a repeat performance of the Galaxy S5. It's a 12 megapixel sensor, not 16, but the strengths and weaknesses are more or less the same. It's great in daylight, but pretty hopeless in the dark. It also comes with live HDR previews in the viewfinder, and HDR shots in general are among the best out there. The auto mode captures pretty good looking shots in most outdoor scenarios, but you also get this big grid of options for tweaking things to your liking. And the modes menu hides even more features like panorama, shot and more, and virtual tour. Video recording is supported at up to 4K, though if you want to use any of the video effects like stabilization, you'll need to switch down to 1080p. At either resolution though, the Alpha is a pretty great video performer. Unfortunately though, the Alpha inherits the GS5's weak low light performance. This phone is just not much good at taking photos in darker conditions, even with a built in software stabilization. Low light shots are often blurry, blotchy, or just plain out of focus, and there are many high end phones out there that beat it hands down in night photography. So that's the Samsung Galaxy Alpha. Overall, it's almost an exceptional smartphone, but trips up in just a couple of areas. The biggest disappointment is battery life, it feels like battery capacity has been cut in order to make everything fit into this super slim profile, and for some people that's going to cause problems on a daily basis. 
you're also getting only half of a really good camera experience. Great daylight shots, but underwhelming low light capabilities. But there is a lot to like about the Galaxy Alpha despite this. It's fast, it's got a great looking screen, and the metal frame design is the best we've seen in a Samsung phone to date. And the company's also hit a sweet spot in terms of size and shape with this 4.7 inch design. For more on the Samsung Galaxy Alpha, check out our full review on androidcentral.com.